It's hard to believe that it's been about three years since Lexus first introduced the all-new second-generation NX to America back in late 2021. Now, at the time, the second-generation NX was designed to showcase a new era for Lexus because this was supposed to be the most comprehensive redesign that we've ever seen from a Lexus vehicle in the brand's 30-plus year history. Now, fast forward, of course, to 2024. The NX represents uh, the second best-selling model here in America with around 75,000 units sold in 2020. Now this week, as you can see, we are testing out a very popular powertrain configuration. This model right here is the 2024 NX350H, the only conventional hybrid that you're going to find in the compact luxury SUV space. And what that essentially means is 240 horsepower under the hood with three electric motors and a gas engine, standard all-wheel drive, and up to 39 MPG combined. So for those of you who are looking for a small, compact luxury SUV that gets much better fuel efficiency than all of its other rivals, that is the brand new new 2024 Lexus NX 350H stack up. Stay tuned to find out. Now, this all-new second-generation NX has only been around for a little under three years now. So, obviously, in terms of the styling, things haven't really changed. But before we talk about the design, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys or remind you guys what's powering this thing. Now, as you can see, unlike the RAV4 on which this vehicle is based, Lexus decided to use hood struts to actually hold the hood up, hood up as opposed to a prop rod. Now, underneath this hood, you're going to find a variation of the latest version of Toyota's hybrid powertrain system. This combines a gasoline four-cylinder. So it's a 2.5-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder. Uh, it's part of their dynamic force engine family, so it has direct and port injection. Uh, it also has two electric motors at the front, plus a third electric motor at the rear, giving this vehicle standard all-wheel drive. So it's three electric motors, electric motors total. The gas engine on its own makes 189 horsepower. That's around, uh, I believe, 13 more versus the gas engine in the comparable Toyota RAV4 hybrid. With the electric motors, Lexus says this model makes 240 horsepower combined. Now that's around 21 more horsepower versus what you get in the RAV4 hybrid. It all goes out through an electronic CVT transmission and eCVT. And like I said earlier, it has electronic all-wheel drive as standard, which means that gas engine does not have a physical connection to the rear axle. The rear axle is powered by a separate electric motor. Uh, now, in terms of fuel efficiency, this is a big strong suit for the NX350H because because this model here is the only conventional hybrid. Every other competitor is a mild hybrid or a plug-in hybrid, which Lexus does offer a plug-in hybrid in the form of the NX450H+, Plus, which is this powertrain plus a much bigger battery pack. The battery pack in this model is around 1.1 kilowatt hours, so it's very small, but it can run on electric power alone at low speeds at very for very short dis distances. Fuel economy is rated at 41 in the city, 37 on the highway, 39 combined. Uh, this vehicle is recommended to run on premium, but you can run it on regular. Uh, it has a 14 and a half gallon fuel tank, so you're looking at around 500 plus miles of range uh, between Phillips, which is fantastic. That's literally double versus what you're going to you know, deal with in terms of an electric competitor in this space. Uh, and in terms of the zero to 60 time, Lexus claims 7.2 seconds. It has a top speed of around 124 miles an hour. This vehicle can tow up to 2,000 pounds, so not the most, but again, most vehicle or most people in the segment don't really tow heavy loads. This car also, as it sits, weighs in at around 4,200 pounds. But let's go ahead and close up this hood and talk about the exterior styling. Because this car, well, even though it's been on the market for a couple years now, almost three years, I do think that the NX still has a certain appeal to it. Uh, I suspect Lexus is probably gonna be working on a refreshed model for 2025 or 2026. You can see the 350H only comes as basically a premium or a luxury trim. This model that I'm showing you is the luxury trim. If you guys are looking for the F-Sport handling package, Lexus does not offer it on the 350H, sadly. This color that I'm showing you is called a Tom silver. It's actually one of my favorite silver colors. I'm not really a fan of silver, but Lexus does a really good job with the hue of their silver color. You can see my test car also has the upgraded premium triple beam LED headlights for 845 bucks. You can see they are an LED low and high beam, LED daytime running light, LED turn signals. If you don't go for the triple beams, you're not going to have the LED turn signals. And then you can see down here, Lexus still does LED fog lights, which I particularly love. The big Lexus spindle grill. This is the older version of the grill. The new RX, of course, introduced a different grill along with the TX. I actually really like the way this looks with this kind of like chain link French design where it has like a gloss gray finish to it. Again, if you if Lexus offered the F Sport package on this car, which you can get on the 350 gas or the 450H plus, it'll essentially give you kind of like a 
mesh finish with a gloss black grill, along with a slightly different front fascia. But overall, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the design, how well it's aged. I think this car still looks pretty good, but again, there are, are some competitors out there that some would argue look better than this car, but looks are always subjective. Now, moving around the side profile, the NX is a perfect sized vehicle for the compact luxury SUV space at 183.5 inches long with a 105.9 inch long wheelbase. This vehicle shares the same wheelbase with the RAV4, but it's around three inches longer. It's a little bit lower. It's a little bit wider. So again, it gives it that more premium uh, stance to it. Um, the uh, non-F-Sport models will have unpainted wheel arch molding trim. You can see it's just a gray finish. You can see the wheels. These are the wheels that you get included or optional on the luxury package. They're a 20-inch multi-spoke design with like a really nice silver uh, glossy, kind of a silver gloss finish. They're uh, wrapped in a 235 by 50 R20 Bridgestone all-season tire. Um, I don't particularly love the look of this wheel. I think the 450H Plus has a better looking wheel. The F-Sport model has a better looking wheel. So I'm hoping that Lexus will do something with the design of the wheels for these luxury package models when they refresh the car. Uh, you can see the mirrors, these are power folding. Uh, you have a chrome accent strip here. You have a full 360 camera along with the Lexus Safety System 3.0, integrated in turn signals. You can see the chrome uh, is present here along the side. My test car also has the beautiful black and rich cream interior. Uh, the 350H hybrid does offer a panel roof. Uh, that's like, I think an extra 500 bucks extra when you guys go for the luxury package. There's also these integrated roof rails, which are you know more aerodynamically shaped, which is nice. And then moving around this angle here, you can see a kind of a conventional look. Some people say it looks a little bit like a Mazda. I personally think this car, uh, again, has some really nice lines, but it looks the best in the F-Sport handling package. So moving around the rear, you can see uh, this is one of the first Lexus vehicles to get their newest design language with the full LED light blade. You can see it has an LED tail light, LED turn signal, LED reverse light, so it's a full LED. This is also the first Lexus vehicle to get Lexus spelled out at the back as opposed to the Lexus L logo. There's a 350H all-wheel drive badge here, some nicely integrated parking sensors, and then you can see no visible exhaust tips because again, this is a hybrid vehicle. There are some fake vents that you're gonna find over here. The rear window wiper you can see is just kind of in right in the middle of the glass. There's no spoiler on this car, although it's kind of like somewhat built in, but again, the F-Sport model doesn't even include any kind of more aggressive spoiler either. My test car also has the digital camera rear view mirror, so that's where the camera lives uh, behind the glass. And then if you wanna look at the cargo capacity, you can see opening it up. Uh, the NX does have reasonable amounts of cargo space, but in terms of the numbers, it's not fantastic. It's around 27 cubic feet of space with the seats up. If you fold down the seats, it has a little under 46 cubic feet of space. So again, by the numbers, it's small for this segment, but it is still fairly usable, but you're gonna find more in something like the Lincoln Corsair, the Audi Q5, the BMW X3. You can see there's a little bit of storage to the side over here. Uh, I like the metal kick plates that you find along the floor. And then if you look underneath here, you can see there's a little bit under floor storage. Your 12 volt battery, I believe, lives underneath that floor here. Uh, and then you can see there's a little bit more storage over here. Uh, I don't see a, digi or a, a temporary spare tire. Uh, so I believe this model actually has some run flat uh, tires. So that's something that uh, you may have to address in the aftermarket by putting uh, a spare, uh, temporary spare tire in this vehicle. So on the exterior of the 2024 NX, things haven't changed and the story continues when we move inside. Now, before we get inside the vehicle, let me go ahead and show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the current Lexus Intelligent Access key. It is a different key versus what Toyota uses. I do think that it is time for Lexus to develop a new key, but uh, the way this key looks and feels is nice. It has the usual buttons for lock, unlock, remote uh, power lift gate, and then panic function. You can also push the lock button three times in sequence and then hold it, and that will remote start the vehicle for you. This car also offers a digital key key function where you can use your phone as a key. That's an extra 450 bucks that my tester also has. If you're an owner, you can set up your phone to allow you to do that. Now you can see uh, the door handle of this vehicle looks conventional. This was also the first Lexus vehicle to get their digital latch door handle system. So you can see this actually doesn't move. It's fixed into position and you have to touch this little area here. There's a little pressure pad. That's what opens the door. If you want to lock the door, just touch your button, your finger there. That'll lock the door. You can see the mirrors will power fold. Lexus sadly does not offer an auto walk away lock or unlock function. So I do wish that Lexus and Toyota would eventually add that feature. Now you can see my test car with the atomic silver exterior has the black and rich cream full leather or semi-aniline full leather interior. These seats are also heated and ventilated and they adjust in uh, 12 different ways. Uh, for the front seats, you also have three-person memory. 
The black and rich cream with the contrast stitching here, you can see it has like an orange stitching, the semi-aniline leather. It feels really plush. It feels super high quality. These seats are a huge upgrade versus what you get in something like a Toyota RAV4. I think Lexus does really fantastic seats. They're just so comfortable and they feel really, really plush. Now, in terms of the door panel materials, this is where I do think that Lexus could do nicer materials. Now, you can see this upper portion has a soft touch injection molded plastic. There's kind of this matte finish black ash wood, which is included with the luxury package. My test car is missing the Mark Levinson stereo for an extra 1500 bucks, which would put a speaker here. Without it, it just has the 10 speaker Lexus premium sound system, which sounds okay. But if you're an audiophile, make sure you tick the box for the Mark Levinson. You can see there's a nice, lovely padded area here with the real leather. It's got the contrasting orange stitching. You have your button here to open up the door, or you can also open that manually in case the power goes out. The window controls have that typical high quality tactile feel that Lexus is known for. They're one touch for all four. Down here it is hard touch plastic. There's a little bit of storage. Uh, and then if you guys go for like an F Sport model, you'll have a different steering wheel and you also have the alloy pedals. This model again is not available with the F Sport handling package. Now getting inside, the NX has a nice easy step in height with around seven ish inches of ground clearance as I shut the door. The door has a pretty solid sounding thunk, although I definitely heard a slight rattle when I closed the door. Let me try that again. Oh, it's, it's actually the seat belt here. So that, that's actually what was rattling. So let me try that one more time just to confirm. Okay, so the door has a nice solid sounding thunk, uh, which adds to that impression of quality. Now, starting the vehicle up, you can see uh, push the start stop button is located higher on the dash so you don't lose sight of it. And then when you put your foot on the brake and turn the vehicle on, you can see uh, it has the newer Lexus chime. Uh, you have a heads up display on this luxury model. Uh, which is available as an option package on lower trims. And then you can see there's a seven inch instrument panel here in front of the driver. It doesn't have the newest system here where you have a fully digital 12 inch display like in the Lexus TX, for example, uh, or the Lexus GX. You can see the steering wheel also it looks very nice. It has really smooth, high quality leather with the contrasting orange stitching paddles on the wheel to control the CVT. It has a power tilt and telescoping function as well. My test car is missing a heated steering wheel. It's an extra 250 bucks that sadly it doesn't have. You have these little controls which are these kind of like touch pads, but you can see um, if you want to know what, what's actually in it, it'll show you when I start resting my finger on it, it'll show you, you, you can kind of change to show different displays. It also will show you that here in the instrument panel. I don't remember it doing that on a 2023 or 2022 model. So that might be a new software thing that Lexus added. And then you can see most models are going to have the upgraded 14 inch display, part of that Lexus, Lexus interface system the lower trims will have a 9.8 inch display. This definitely looks fantastic. It's mounted nice and high on the dash. It's within easy reach. Uh, and you can see the climate functions stay pretty much down here. And then you have the upper portion here where you can see there's the Apple CarPlay, which is wireless on Android Auto. And it also has over the air updates. You can also push this button here and it'll expand the CarPlay to the little quadrant here, but it gets rid of the uh, Lexus native system here where you can kind of go back to the native system. In terms of the dash materials, you can see there is a soft touch injection molded plastic. Again, some competitors offer um, a stitched leather area on the door panel and on the dash. And I do wish that Lexus would consider offering that. This is a nice high quality graining and it feels really nice. But again, that's something that Lexus could improve. Um, down over here, you can see there is some actual stitching. Uh, and in some contrasting stitching. There's some beautiful leather. This is nice and padded where your knees might hit there. So that's a, definitely a nice touch. You can see there's dual zone climate control and actual volume knob. I love how the temperature dial kind of shows uh, or it shows what the temperature is in the actual dial itself. One of the changes they made for 2024 is this glove box door. You can see it's now color coordinated to the uh, black and white rich cream. In the 2023 and 2022 models, this would just be black or it would be red or it would be the Palomino color. Uh, if you guys you know have the, the different options for the colors, which is nice. You can see your drive mode selector is here. It has the sport, which gives you attack, push it to go to normal and then go to the left to go to eco mode, which kind of shows blue. Um, the Lexus interface system here, I've showed you guys before, there's the embedded GPS, which uh, it is a cloud-based navigation system. Most of you are gonna end up using the car GPS anyways. You can go to climate over here. You can adjust a couple of things. And then you can also go into the settings here. You can also adjust the ambient lighting. Now the luxury package does include ambient lighting. They call it thematic ambient lighting. So if you go to illumination, you can say, you can choose different themes. Uh, the ambient lighting in Lexus vehicles, while it is a nice touch, I will say it's a little bit weak. You don't really see much in terms of ambient lighting. There's a little bit of lighting in the door panels, in the footwells, but I would like to see Lexus do more beautiful, you know, 
uh, lined lighting along the dash that kind of creates that, you know, that whole effect that you're in something that's a little bit more special. It's nice that it's here, but it would be better if Lexus kind of upped the ante on that. Now you can see there's a button here to push uh, the full, the th for the full 360 camera, you can see it does a perimeter scan. The graphics on the camera, uh, they could be better, but again, they're not the worst in the segment. I find this view to be kind of useless. Uh, most of you, again, are probably just going to put the vehicle in reverse and you're going to notice there's the camera there with the top down view. It has cross traffic. It has automatic rear braking and stuff like that. It has trajectory. It has parking sensors. Um, so again, the graphics are not class leading, but they're also not the worst in the segment. So that's definitely nice. You have two USB charging boards here, an A or a C and an A. You have a nice wireless phone charging pad here, which my phone is currently charging up and then you can slide that open. It reveals a nice little storage area here that's hidden. It also is lined with felt, which is nice. This controls your electronic CVT transmission. This essentially came from out of like a Prius, but it does have a nice leather wrapped shift knob. You can see to put it into reverse, you have to kick it that way first and then go up to go to reverse, kick it that way and then go down to go to drive. There's also a sport mode in the transmission there. Push the P button to go to park. Uh, you can also put it into like a trail mode for the all-wheel drive system, an EV mode if the car has enough charge and you don't push the pedal too hard. Uh, I like how there's not piano black plastic here, but there is here, so that kind of shows scratches and dirt. I kind of wish that Lexus would just use this material on this area here. Electronic parking brake. There's also a nice padded center console here. Open that up, you can see it offers some decent storage and whatnot. It also opens up from the other side too, which is a nice touch. Uh, the seats, like I said earlier, heated and ventilated. They offer 12-way adjustments, three-person memory on the driver's side. The heat and ventilation function also works well. The glove compartment, you can see it's a bin style. It's damped and it's lined with felt. Uh, so that's nice. I love the digital camera review mirror, which you can turn off if you just want to go to a conventional mirror by flipping that. Uh, that is an op optional charge on the upper trims. You can see there's LED map lighting in here, and then you can see big panoramic sunroof. You can't get this still on the plug-in hybrid model, only on the 350H and the 350 Turbo model. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the horn, it sounds pretty nondescript, but at least it doesn't sound puny. Um, so again, everything about this interior is basically still the same aside from that little color change for the glove box and I believe the little added graphic here in the actual instrument panel as opposed to just in the heads-up display. Uh, but let's go ahead and hop into the backseat area because this is where the NX does give up a little bit in terms of the competitors. But if you open up the rear seat door, you can see the door could open up a little bit larger, but you have just over 36 inches of legroom back here. Now you can see the semi-aniline leather and the two-tone combination is carried over, which looks nice. The door panel is still the same soft touch injection molded plastic with that matte finished wood padded area over here where your elbows would rest. Uh, these seats also do uh, give you a slight recline function where you can recline it slightly, or you can also fold it down to create a somewhat flat load floor for this back seat. Now getting back here, let me go ahead and show you guys the space. You can see this is where I'd have the seat to drive essentially. When I close the door, you can see there's pretty good amount of leg space, foot space underneath. I can get back here and kind of cross my legs. Uh, it's a little bit on the tighter side. You do have rear seat air vents. You have uh, USB, two USB-C charging ports, a power outlet. Um, you can get heated rear seats. My test car, however, doesn't have it because it doesn't have the recline, power recline function for the rear seats, which also rolls in the heated seats. You can see, fold this down, there's an armrest with two cup holders. And then with the Pano sunroof, you can see headroom space is it's fine for me, but if you're over six feet, you're gonna notice that this doesn't have very much headroom space. So overall, the interior of this car, the back seat area is certainly usable for average size adults. If you plan to put a bunch, like two car seats in here and all their stuff, you might notice to, it to be a little bit tight. At that point, you know, Lexus obviously will happily sell you a TX, uh, which is going to give you all the additional space that you're looking for in a family vehicle. So here we are back behind the wheel of the Lexus NX350H. There are essentially no changes to the powertrain for this vehicle versus the last time that I drove it about a year ago. But since then, uh, some new competition has showed up and this vehicle has represented about a third of NX sales here in the US, which actually is a pretty big chunk. I mean, Lexus NX sales in general up were up like 52% versus 2022. So clearly this vehicle remains a popular option for a lot of luxury buyers out there or just somebody who wants something a little bit nicer than like a CRV or RAV4. Anyways, the last time that I 0 to 60 tested this vehicle on this stretch of road, it was a little damp. Uh, and I got seven seconds, zero to 60, 6.9, I think was the quickest time that I got. This car, remember, has a four cylinder, two and a half liter with three electric motors, making 240 horsepower combined. So let's go ahead and see what we can get. This time I have the car in sport mode um, and let's just see what we can get. This car actually does pretty well if you brake torque it. Still spins the front tires slightly, because remember the uh, engine primarily powers the front wheels. 
All right, we got 6.86 seconds there. So that's a 0.2 second improvement versus the last time I 0-60 tested this car. And there again, no powertrain changes, but that time is actually a pretty good time because the last um, NX350 that I had, which, was, which has the turbo engine, that did it in 6.4 seconds. So this engine is only around a half a second slower, even though it is down on power by about 35 horsepower. Um, but we don't know the torque figure of this engine, but again, it's an electric, it's got three electric motors. The rear axle is powered solely by an electric motor. That's why the front wheels will spin because the front engine or the engine only powers the front wheels. The rear gets its traction from the rear electric motor, which just doesn't have as much power as the uh, gas engine, which makes almost 190 horsepower on its own. But let's go ahead and test it out here. This time I won't brake torque it. We'll just floor it and see what we can get. It's very, very quick off the line actually because of that instantaneous torque. You do hear the engine kind of moaning away, 7.35 there. So in most real world conditions, you're gonna be doing in the low seven second range because um, most people don't brake torque the vehicle to get maximum acceleration. I also had it on that stretch there, which has a slightly more uphill gradient. It's like 1.4% versus on my first run, it's on a completely flat uh, surface. So again, power is never really was never really an issue with this car. Even though you know some people might bark at the idea of a you know a, a Lexus that has the same powertrain as the Toyota Rav4 hybrid. Although this car has about 21 more horsepower versus a comparable Rav4 hybrid with the same powertrain. The difference is the gas engine. I believe the gas engine has a little bit more power uh, thanks to the tune. This engine is designed to run on premium gas, but. Um, I have the drive mode selector in sport right now. Uh, this car does not come with the adaptive dampers, and that's something that I criticized Lexus before. I wish that they would offer the F Sport handling package on the NX350H. Currently, you can only get it on the 350 gas turbo or the 450H plus. With you know, the 350H conventional hybrid, you know, representing a third of the sales of the NX, I think it would even expand the, you know, sales pie mix of this powertrain even more if they would just offer the F-Sport package. So Lexus, if you're watching this, please consider, you know, offering the F-Sport handling package on this car, potentially for the refresh model that I'm suspecting is gonna come for the 2025 or 2026 model year. Overall, this car is not the sportiest driving vehicle, but it still is very competent. The suspension is on the softer side. The car itself feels very solid, uh, it just feels a little bit soft, but I think that's kind of the mission. Most people in this segment, they don't really care too much for handling dynamics. I mean, if you want a good handling SUV, you're gonna buy a BMW X3 or a Porsche Macan. Those vehicles are gonna be significantly more expensive, however. Now, <laughs> the front is totally spinning out the axle there. Um, and that's because, again, this car has relatively skinny 235 width tires, but we are on a 20 inch wheel. But again, most people aren't gonna drive that way. You're just gonna kind of drive the car, you know, in normal conditions and maybe like seven tenths at the most. And this is where the NX350H is very pleasant. The CVT is responsive. Uh, it has plenty of electric motor torque down low. When you do put your foot down, you will hear the engine. It can get a little bit loud at times. I do wish for a little bit more sound deadening between the engine and the rest of the interior here, but let's floor it this time, see what we can get. This time I didn't brake torque it. We are on a level surface here because I wanna see if I can get consistently that 6.8. 6.9, so it really only is a 0.1 second difference if you brake torque it. So again, most of you are gonna be doing that kind of a zero to 60 number, which is perfectly acceptable. The only downside is just the noise that you hear from that four cylinder. The turbo 2.4 isn't going to be quite as loud. And if you guys go for the plug-in hybrid, you can also get the option of you know driving it in pure EV mode, uh, which it can do up to 37 miles of electric only range. But I'll switch the drive mode here into normal. That gets rid of the tack and the instrument panel. I also think that Lexus should have already put their fully digital display in this car, which they haven't. And in this mode here, the steering gets a little bit lighter, the throttle response gets a little bit softer, uh, and you just notice the car is just comfortable. This car is quiet on the inside. I didn't hear a single squeak or rattle, and that's what I really appreciate about Lexus press cars. Every time I have one, even if it's a pre-production car, their, their build quality is just incredibly solid. Um, you really feel that. The seats are so comfortable. Uh, they're heated and ventilated. I'm annoyed my tester for this price doesn't have a heated steering wheel. It's a $250 a la carte option. It should have just been rolled in with the luxury package, I think. Uh, I also have this really nice heads-up display. You have the Le Lexus Safety System 3.0, which includes their pre-collision assist, adaptive cruise control, traffic jam assist, automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist. All of that works extremely well. Um, and again, I really appreciate you know, Lexus's driver assistance technology. I think it's also pretty much at the top of the segment in terms of you know the luxury brands out there. 
Visibility is also good. I can see out of the front, the sides, uh, the rear also with this digital camera rear mirror. I highly recommend that option if you don't want to, if you don't have it, the view out of the back is still very good. You can still see pretty well. It doesn't have these kind of like, you know, swoopy angles that, you know, limit the size of the rear view um, or the rear window back there. But overall, I'm still impressed. I mean, this car has been on the market for a couple of years now, and there are so many good options out there. There's Audi Q5, Acura RDX, BMW X3, Mercedes-Benz GLC, which is technically the newest option, Porsche Macan, which is an older option, but the electric version is uh, just rolling out later this year for US market. Um, this thing still offers plenty to like, and it's no surprise to me that sales were up about 52% versus last year, because this car kind of ticks all the boxes. And if you're looking for a conventional hybrid, this this is one of this is again still the only option out there. Yes, there are mild hybrids. There are plug-in hybrids, which are a lot more expensive. But nobody else in the segment offers a conventional hybrid. Now, Lincoln just introduced a conventional hybrid on the Nautilus, but technically the Nautilus is a step above this car. It's built to compete against the Lexus RX. Um, the Lincoln Corsair does not offer that conventional hybrid powertrain that we just saw on the new Nautilus. So I'll be curious to see if Lincoln will update that at some point for the next generation Corsair. But in terms of fuel efficiency, this is again, another reason why you choose the NX because in my week's worth of testing, this car in the highway, on the highway where you're going about 75 to 80, it was averaging around 32 MPG. When you slow down to around 65, the MPG went up to 36 MPG on the highway. Remember, hy hybrids do better at lower speeds than around town. Around town, I was getting around 40 MPG in this car, which is excellent. I mean, you're gonna do easily like 10 MPG better versus the gas-only non-hybrid version. The plug-in hybrid should get a little bit less gas mileage because it's a little heavier, um, but you do have that benefits of the electric-only range. Uh, with this uh, 14 and a half gallon fuel tank, you'll do about 500 miles on a full tank. 500 miles on a full tank makes this thing an excellent road trip companion. And it's gonna literally do twice the range of you know an electric vehicle like a Genesis GV70 electrified. Uh, again, Genesis doesn't do a hybrid version of their vehicles. They just do gas or they do electric. And that's kind of, again, one of the big selling features about the Lexus NX. So it's no surprise to me because they have so many different options in terms of you know powertrains, in terms of the styling, in terms of the sportiness or the luxury luxury quotia, I think that Lexus kind of has that secret sauce there. And I think that's the reason why so many people like this car. Combine that with the impeccable build quality and reputation for reliability that Lexus has. And it's no surprise to me that this vehicle continues to be one of the top sellers out there. And it also continues to be one of my favorite options if you guys are looking for a vehicle like this. So with a little over 74,500 units sold in the US in 2023, the Lexus NX was the second best-selling Lexus vehicle here in the States. Of course, it was behind the Lexus RX, which the company did around 110,000 units in that same time frame. But still, this model's sales were up 52% versus 2022. And it's pretty easy to see why. This hybrid version of the NX, the conventional 350H, actually represented around a third of total NX sales. When you add in the plug-in hybrid, and sales of the NX uh, electrified versus gas is around a 60-40 split. So obviously there's room for improvement for Lexus to continue expanding the availability of the hybrid electrified powertrains for the NX. And when you really look at the demand, uh, if you look at Toyota and Lexus hybrid vehicles nowadays, everybody seems to want to uh, get one of those vehicles. Dealers are charging markups on those. Toyota and Lexus can't seem to build enough of those models, especially when you compare it to EVs because demand for EVs nowadays have really softened, but demands for hybrids have really just increased over the years. And it kind of shows that Lexus and Toyota were playing a really good smart game because they really wanted to put their eggs in the hybrid electric basket as opposed to the full EV basket. And it's really showing you know, great strides for them because all their dealers are essentially cashing in and consumers are also loving the hybrid electric vehicles that Toyota and Lexus are putting out. Now, after spending the full week with this model here, just like the version that I tested last year, this is still one of my favorite compact luxury SUVs with that conventional hybrid powertrain. I mean, fuel efficiency, you're gonna easily get in the mid 30 MPG range. You'll get closer to 40 if you drive this vehicle mostly in rush hour traffic. Zero to 60 time, as you guys saw, is going to be in the seven second range or below seven seconds if you guys are crazy like me and brake torque it and trying to do those stoplight drag races. In terms of the handling dynamics, this is definitely Definitely not the sportiest driving vehicle, so that's my one criticism with the NX. The F-Sport handling package helps things slightly, but again, if you're looking for a sporty driving compact SUV, you're gonna be looking at a Porsche Macan or a BMW X3 or an Alfa Romeo uh, Stelvio, but again, those vehicles are our 
are far more expensive and they're also a lot more you know high strung in terms of maintenance and they don't have the same reputation for reliability and comfort that Lexus has and I think that's kind of the winning combination of this vehicle. The back seat also is a little bit on the smaller side along with the cargo area but again if you don't plan to use this to carry your super tall friends or put a lot of stuff in the back seat or in the trunk all the time this again is an excellent option out there and it's also one of the few options out there if you guys are looking for just a conventional hybrid that won't necessarily break the bank because if you guys are looking to get your hands on a 2024 nx the base 250 with front wheel drive which is essentially a toyota rav4 uh, a base rav4 engine i would probably avoid that although i haven't driven it yet i've driven it in the rav4 don't love that powertrain that model starts at a little over forty thousand dollars around forty thousand six hundred add two thousand dollars if you guys want all-wheel drive the 350h however is going to start at around 44,655. So uh, if you look at it on paper, this is around four grand more than the base version of the NX, but you really have to compare it to an NX350 with the turbo engine, which comes standard with all-wheel drive. That model has a base price of around 44,315. So this version here is around $300 more expensive than the turbo version. And at that point, it's kind of a no-brainer because you get literally 10 plus MPG better and it's also going to you know, pay at the pump. You're gonna make that money uh, back a lot quicker, especially if you guys plan to do just normal everyday driving. This is getting significantly better gas mileage. It is a little bit slower than the turbo, and you can't get the F-Sport handling package, but I think for most people, this is going to check all the boxes, especially if you're looking for something that's just quiet and reliable. Now, this model here with the luxury package that I'm showing you with the 20-inch wheels, with the upgraded semi-aniline leather, the triple beam headlights, the panoramic sunroof, this model here comes in to 55750 So just under 56 grand. Sounds pretty expensive. That used to be RX money, but again, this represents around a $5,000, you know, cheaper price at the top end versus a lot of its European rivals. If you want a plug-in hybrid version of this car, it's easily going to cost you around 10 grand more. And sadly, the plug-in hybrid doesn't qualify for the tax credit. So that's exactly why the 350H, I believe, continues to remain the sweet spot. So I'm hoping that Lexus will eventually offer this car, this, this engine with the F-Sport handling package. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2024 Lexus NX 350H. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, Guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.